Okay, it's nine o'clock. Let's get started. Good morning. Welcome to today's meeting of the Jones Library Board of Trustees. Um, I'm going to ask you to indicate your presence. Lee? Present. Thank you, Farah. Here. Jean? Here. Tammy? Present. Thank you. And Austin is present. Okay, I know of no changes or additions to the agenda. Uh, the next item, item number three, is the approval of minutes of the meeting of January 22nd. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So move. Is there a second. second? Thank you very much. Corrections to the minutes. Barbara. So I, I had a few... Um... Little things like the AM, PM, and the month, year thing, but maybe that's something I could send Eugene for future uh, reference, if that's okay. But the sure. one thing I had was um, the two main things were item 6B about the uh, buildings and facilities meeting. I think we're meeting in March. We're not meeting this month. And 9B, it should read how to act slash respond, not how to action re respond. Those were the two big ones. Thank, thank you for. OK, other corrections to the minutes of January 22nd. Okay, on the question of approving the minutes, Lee, Lee Edwards? Uh, yes, approve. Farah? Yes. Eugene? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Robert Pam? Yes. And Austin abstained since I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. Uh, next is public comment. We have, uh, looks like five people in attendance. Thank you for coming. If anyone would like to make a public comment, if you would raise your virtual hand. Okay. Uh, next item is the president's report. So I want to let you know that we are very close to an agreement, uh, at least having an agreement for you to consider um, with the Amherst Historical Society. We had a very good meeting. We've had some back and forth about uh, particular details of the, um, uh, of the agreement. And I think what will happen is we may have to meet between now and our next scheduled meeting to actually review and approve um, the agreement. Uh, the agreement is going to uh, the town's lawyer. It's been shared with the historical uh, society and uh, we've got a couple of things that we need to we need to fix. But again, the conversations were as one would have expected them to be quite constructive. Uh, in terms of uh, everybody's desire to reach an agreement about this uh, about this easement. Okay, any questions about that? And what I hope is that we will when when we have uh, this agreement completed, that is to say, ready for you to to look at, we'll we'll meet and review the um, we'll meet and review the. Um, uh, agreement, the, the easement. Okay. Uh, next item is the library building committee. Uh, the building committee has not met in a while, uh, but a lot of progress is being made. We're in the bidding phase now. Uh, there was a walkthrough with general contractors. Uh, we are also uh, trying to make some decisions about uh, interim sites. Uh, no decisions yet are, um, are are made. No proposal yet for you all to consider. So um, that's the report from the 
from the building committee. Um, the building committee will be, we, we, we have um, one opening in the building committee for a public member and uh, interviews will uh, take place pretty soon. Uh, so we will um, hopefully pretty soon have, uh, again, complete membership on the building committee. Anything else, any questions about the building committee? Okay, next for our build, buildings and facilities. Do you have any, any report from buildings and facilities? <clears throat> no, we haven't met since, um, we haven't met this year yet. But the only thing I do know is that the North Amherst Library had the soft opening and I don't know when we're having the official Opening, Sharon. Do we know? No. Sometime in in the spring is what Paul okay. was telling me. But uh, we have we'll probably meet again sometime early March. That's all I know. Yeah, and we do want to just say how fabulous it is that the North Amherst Library is mm -hmm. open again uh, from. I haven't been in the building from the outside. It just looks, it just looks fabulous. Uh, so this this gem of a branch library uh, will continue to serve as it has for a very long time. Uh, the residents, in particular, of North of of North Amherst. So we're really we're really thrilled. Development committee, Ms. Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> hey tables in, in your packet, but I'll just read out the results. Great. New Fund is continuing on the trend that we've been seeing this year. We're slightly ahead of where we were at the same time last year um, with a slightly fewer gifts than we had. So we're getting fewer gifts, but the gifts are generally higher. So we're at 88,244 this year. Versus 81,315 last year, 479 gifts this year, 490 last year. And we're doing our best to figure out what that's about and to find people who have lapsed and see if we can encourage them to come back. And of course, as always, to thank profoundly all those who have so generously given. The... Um, capital campaign. Again, you have the results. Uh, the total for um, the, the, the total at the bottom of the capital campaign is 9465919 which was up 40418 for the month. Uh, December, we took in 200, almost 240000 a lot of that uh, was in kind of um, upside, downside to the town council's vote. Um, because the vote came late, we probably did not get as much in end of the year contributions as we would have had the vote come earlier. But because the vote did come, it did encourage people to give and people are starting to fulfill their pledges and in some instances increase their pledges. So. Uh, and we've also, um, various members of the committee have been working very hard on uh, the historic tax credits and uh, relations with the historic commission, as Austin pointed out. And that has taken a certain amount of time and energy. Um, we are waiting for um, a large check from our largest institutional donor to come come and, and clear. We understand that that's in the works. And uh, when that happens, we anticipate transferring $800,000 from the capital campaign accounts to the town. So in addition to the 300,000 that the, I understand that the library recently transferred from its accounts, from the endowment, from um, bequests mostly, uh, to the town that will make a, a million one hundred thousand of new cash transfers to the town. If you add that to the five hundred thousand that went over in 
uh, June of 2022, I believe that will bring what between the capital campaign and the library has been transferred to the town to a million six hundred thousand. That's my report. Thank you, Lee. Questions for the development committee. Okay, thank you, Lee. Thanks for the work. Mm -hmm. Tammy, anything from uh, personnel planning and policy? Uh, we have not met since the last board meeting. We have a meeting scheduled tomorrow morning. Um, I did want to ask Farah if she had any reporting from the Jedi Committee. Uh, no, we haven't met since our last meeting either, Tammy. And okay, there's okay. just been a few surveys coming in since then, so I have nothing to report either. Okay. All right, that's it, Austin. Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> Thank you for... Okay, next is the Budget Committee. Mr. Pam. Um, and the Budget Committee will meet tomorrow, I believe. Um, so I don't have a report on that. Um, <clears throat> However, um, the basic point about the, the budget is that you know, the amount that is coming in from the uh, annual appeal uh, is running at roughly the same level as last year, which means that we are likely to be short um, compared to the budget that we adopted by sixty or $70,000. Um, that may or may not make a big difference as long as we are not spending very much um, because we are basically packing up and moving and, and that is not uh, as expensive as, as some other things could be. Um, it's also been a mild winter so far, so uh, it may balance out, but uh, nonetheless, we still do not have a functioning budget because we don't know where we will be going and we don't know what the cost will be for uh, being there. So uh, it remains something of a, a black box. Thank you, Bob. Questions about the budget? Okay, uh, Bob. Uh, next is, uh, did you want to say anything about the budget request? Um, haven't talked about it yet. We will talk about it tomorrow. Right. Okay. Uh, next is um, investment. Mr. Pam. Here there are a couple of things to be said. Um, I have reported in the last couple of meetings that uh, we need to make a decision at this meeting about whether to, can, to approve a uh, motion which i will read which is to continue to invest the jones library incorporated funds with vanguard as the uh, investment advisory service um, is sh shifted uh, to to mercer uh, that is the uh, let me let me describe the situation once once more. Bob, um, yes, that's a motion you want the board. We're going to vote on. Yes, the actual words for it, as written, are to continue to invest the Jones Library Incorporated funds with Vanguard as Vanguard transitions its institutional outsourced chief investment officer business to Mercer. If Bob, uh, if just one second, is there a second to that motion, please? Second. Thank you. Okay, Bob. Okay. Um, Vanguard decided that it would sell its uh, advisory service business to Mercer, which is a offshoot of Marsh uh, McLennan, uh, which is a, a very large uh, business involving uh, the investment in services of various kinds. So they are a, a major player in the insurance world. They're a major player in a variety of other worlds, including the um, investment advisory services to for-profit companies. 
they had decided they wanted to expand more into the uh, nonprofit world, and Vanguard is one of the larger players in that world. So they have made an offer to Vanguard. Vanguard has essentially accepted it, and it will probably close. Um, they had originally planned for February 15th. I believe it's now late March or April. Um, <clears throat> the result of that will be that the whole investment advisory services that we have received um, will be transferred over to Mercer. The basic rules and, and uh, operations of that business will not change. However, their access to information will come not from Vanguard, but from Mercer, which has similar kinds of services. Um, our team will not change. They have been offered the incentives to stay and to stay for a while. Um, so consequently, what we would expect will be largely the same. Uh, Vanguard has separately from this been slowly evolving its uh, monthly reporting and quarterly reporting, um, and that's not likely to change immediately, um, although who knows what it will look like in a year. Um, I have been thinking about and looking at some of the alternatives for what we are doing. Um, and most of them are substantially more expensive and are not something that I would want to do in a short term move. So my recommendation is that we uh, sign the appropriate papers to allow uh, our current advisory group to continue to provide services and over this coming year, we should actually take a look at what other alternatives there are as Mercer at that point will tell us what, what changes they will be providing. Um, that's, that's my report on that. <clears throat> so are there uh, questions? Yeah, questions about this transition to Mercer. So Bob, can we be a little um, so this notion that they're transferring their advisory services, uh, does that mean they're transferring their whole business or they're going to retain some part of their business where they ma actually manage the investments? What, what does it mean in terms of Vanguard? Well, Vanguard, what we buy from Vanguard are actual accounts and yep. what we buy are uh, a variety of investment products uh, from Vanguard, and all of those will not be changed by this transaction. Uh, included in those, those products are custody of their products. Um, it is conceivable well, it's more than conceivable. It is it is accurate to say that um, as a as a Mercer advisory service, uh, they may well offer and encourage uh, additional investments which might be different. If so, then those investments would have different profiles in terms of costs, and they would have different profiles in terms of custody and so on. But if we choose not to change what we are investing in, then none of those things would change. I am told that uh, the actual fees for the advisory services, are, they do not plan to change at this time, um, since basically what they are buying is a book of business. Uh, it would be silly for them to immediately say, okay, now that we have you as a client, we're going to triple your fees. I know that would, that would not encourage people to say. So I don't expect the fees to change anytime immediately. Although I don't know who Mercer is yeah. well enough to say what it will be like six months or a year from now. Yeah. And one other thing, Bob, you said that they've incentivized some of their staff to stay. to stay. So we would anticipate that at some period of time, those people would 
may transition out and we would then have to deal with other people that MRSA would provide. Well, we are now uh, dealing with our fourth investment advisor as, as, yep. as our Vanguard representative. Um, it is my understanding that, that they encourage the people to stay now and probably have an incentive structure which would encourage them to stay for a while. There are roughly 200 people in the advisory service, and I'm told most of them are going over. Okay. Um, okay, other questions about this transition to Mercer? Okay, Bob, anything else on investment? Whoa, 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 sorry, my bad. So we're gonna vote on the motion to yes. approve um, the continuation of this relationship as the transition goes on to Mercer. So voting on the motion, yes. To approve, no, not to approve, Lee Edwards. Yes. Bar. Yes. Eugene? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Bob? Yes. Austin votes yes. Thank you. Okay, Bob. Okay, the one question that I would have is, you know, there's paperwork that, that requires a signature. I'm not yet sure whether it is my signature or your signature that will be Let required. <clears throat> okay. okay, anything else from investment? Uh, well, as always, there is a report, which is that as of um, January 31st, the uh, Endowment account had a value of eight million eight hundred fourteen thousand and seventy six dollars and seventy eight cents, and the Woodbury Fund had a value of seven hundred and twenty six thousand seven hundred and seventy three dollars and three cents. So um, this has been a good couple of months. It is nice to to have it rise by. Oh, um, basically a, a million dollars over the last six months. <laughs> um, be nice if I could say that that is always going to be the case, but that is not what I get to say. So uh, that is where that is. Uh, the little reports are available if anybody wants to actually read them. They're somewhat detailed and um, they... Um, give a, a fairly clear picture of what we're doing in now. Any other questions about investment? Okay, thank you. The next item is a report from the Friends of the Jones Library System. And uh, I see Elaine Donahue is there. Hi, hey, Elaine. I'm here. Hi. I've been listening. Thank you. Um, Thank you for joining us. Sure. Um, starting next month, Rich Morse will be the liaison with the trustees. Um, we had toyed with taking turns, but I think a consistent person is a good idea. So um, I asked him if he would be interested, and he was, but he couldn't make it this month. Uh, we're meeting tonight, so there we have not had a meeting since the last time I reported, and that was on the fact that we finished selling Edith Byron's paintings and made about $9,000. Uh, we are planning on having a, what, we're, what Nancy calls a brainstorming session on March 18th, um, sort of looking at the future of the friends, what our plans are, things like that. And I think Lee and Kent are going to join us. Um, so um, yeah, that will be next month. Anybody can join who wants to. And I think, oh, and we did start clearing out the third floor. <laughs> room of our stuff but that it might take a little while but um, there's not too much it's okay i hope it was a joyous cleaning <laughs> um it was a very dusty cleaning <laughs> with lots of sneezing going on there's a lot of stuff up there uh, if anybody's interested in bows and ribbons i think it was from the time of katie george uh -huh. when she used to do the valentine uh baskets there are boxes full of written really nice ribbons and bows and things like that, which I'm hoping to find a good home for. Great. Thank you. Okay, any questions for Elaine about the friends? 
So we can't say it often enough. So let's say it, how grateful we are for the work that the friends um, do for your dedication to the um, to, to the library. It is it is absolutely um, remarkable, and we are we are very we are very grateful, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing what happens to the ribbons. Yes, thank you, <laughs> thank you, and the rest of the stuff up there. Yeah, thanks. Okay, any questions for Elaine? Okay, great, thanks, Elaine. Mm -hmm. All right, next is the director's report. Sharon, nothing from me. Thank you. Okay, so I think we I think we are done. So it's Bob. Yeah, I have a personal note that I think is required, and that is that um, my son in Washington D.C. is uh, uh, expecting to have a baby, and he has requested that his grandparents be available to help. And that has led myself and my wife to think about moving to the Washington DC area. And consequently, I don't know exactly how quickly or when this will happen, um, but it is likely to occur um, before my term is over and probably before the year is over. So, um, I thought I should let you know that um, it will be a, something of a lurch for me. <laughs> um, but I am preparing for that. First of all, first and most importantly, Mazel Tov. That's, um, that is fabulous. Second, uh, were this plan to come to fruition, uh, it would be an enormous loss for the Board of Trustees. Um, you've done uh, amazing work for us in all ways, Bob. Uh, and and we, we are incredibly grateful for the work that you do and grateful that you gave us a heads up um, as the plan matures and you are clear about when you might transition off the board again it'd be great if you would um would let us um would let us know and we wish you the best in thinking about um that move the weather will be better there um though the library can't be as good but the weather will be the weather will be better well, oh. tra transitions probably require that that it as as this gets firmed up, you know, we may want some people to to be uh, getting more active in the things that I've been doing. Yeah, ab 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 absolutely. And I think the process is, if in fact this transition transition comes to fruition, uh, you would submit a letter of resignation, and the town would go through a process of appointing a successor who would serve out the remainder of your term. Yes. Okay, Yafar. On the plus side, Bob, you can bring your new grandchild to the new library, and they could actually make use of the updated library. Look forward to it. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. Stay well. Keep your masks on. <laughs> Stay well. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.